Move we approve. Have a move and a second to approve the meetings. All in favor? Be four, zero, and one. <clears throat> Chris, do you have anything that? Mr. Chairman, we're trying to sort, make sure we don't go over to COVID protocols. And so we have some applicants outside that's later on the agenda, but we will be, be making an announcement to call them back in. Okay. We, what he's explaining is that as the cases come up, people that pertain to that particular case that we're working on that time will be asked into the meeting to give their pros or cons. You will have 15 minutes on either side to either oppose or be in favor of uh, this, same, this applicant that you're talking about at that time. Um, if there's questions from this board or from the board of commissioners, it will not, not count against your 15 minutes, but that's a total of 15 minutes so if you have five people uh, you need to be aware that you've got someone behind you that might want to speak instead of taking the whole 15 minutes yourself uh, either way it's your 15 minutes use the way you want um, Chris are you ready for the first case yes sir I'm ready all right first application is 2020 SUP Application by Ron Ronsard Mazil requesting a special use permit on approximately 18.43 acres for the operation of a personal care home uh, care facility. Property is located in land lots 163 and 164, District 2, Section 3. It's at 410 Dewberry Creek Drive, which is southeast of East Memorial Drive. It's in Commission Post 1. We've had one call with opposition. And uh, staff has recommended if this, if this is approved that there's five stipulations. And the applicant is present. Will app applicant come to the podium and sign in, please? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Gonsard Mazel. I am looking and seeking a special use permit to open a personal home care facility at 410 Dubaby Creek Drive, Dallas, Georgia, 30132. I have been praying and looking for a place since 2015, and by June of 2016, God had led me to such location, and I have been doing pastoral care since I was 18 years old visiting hospitals, nursing home, and also others who have been home stricken. And it been a passion of mine to be able to see individuals in the latter years have a better sense of life and a quality of life as well. And I have been trying for a while to try to find such a location to open such a facility and as I was looking at my aunt, my dad, and my uncle, and godparents deteriorating to old age, and I wanted them to be near me to be able to have been trying to give them a better way of life. Unfortunately, they have gone before us to a far better place, and I still want to go forward with my dream to open such facility. Does anyone have any questions? To the applicant. Yes, I do. Good afternoon, sir. Good I have afternoon. a couple questions for you. Um, so, looking at the property, uh, it is a 1,489 square foot property, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And um, it has a basement, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Is that a finished basement or an unfinished basement? It's a semi finished basement. Okay. Do you plan on finishing that basement? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, so how many rooms total will be in that uh, house? Uh, three upstairs and possibly two in the lower level. Okay, so five. 
And then uh, you will be residing in there as well? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you will take one room? Do you have you and your family? Do you have m multiple family members that will be residing in there with you? No, nah, multiple. I have a adjacent to that property, which is 460 Lee Bones Road. I also own that, and that's where they will be residing. Okay. So um, according to this, it's saying that you can have up to nine people there, correct? Yes, ma'am. So nine people residing in a 1,489 square foot home. My concern is that seems awful small for something like that. Um, uh, secondly is, as being a personal health care uh, or home care facility, correct? Yes. Are these going to be individuals that are just elderly, or are they going to be people that need medical attention? Not medical attention, but elderly. Elderly. Okay. Yes. So most elderly people need some sort of, are they going to be where they uh, have uh, any incapacities where, like, they can, do they need wheelchairs? Are you going to have to modify the home? Because if you have, you know, where the, the home is an older home, so it's not... Um, equipped for wheelchair accessibility, the, the doors, the bathrooms, all of that. They actually are. It is? Okay. Yes. Okay. So it's been remodeled to where or to the, uh, brought up to standards and codes as it is uh, wheelchair accessibility every room in the house? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, does this facility have to be approved by the um, health department? The Georgia department, I, I believe, yes. Okay. I send in the uh, application. Okay, and so I would imagine all of the individuals who will be residing in the home will be on the one floor, correct? It will be on the two floor. Okay, so is there there's stairs inside going up and down? Yes, there is, and also uh, there's a wheelchair and also walk around to go to the lower level, an opening to the okay. lower level. So you're saying there's five rooms, correct? Yes, ma'am. And then you'll be occupying one. Yes. And so you'll have four rooms left. Yes. And there can be a maximum of nine individuals yes, in that home, in a four-bedroom home. Yes. That's concerning to me. Well, again, the Department of Georgia have to come and also give the final uh, capacity. Mm -hmm. as well so it's not just you know I'm just going to just go ahead with that they have to give me the final approval on that and also the fire department have to come and do their inspection as well okay and will you have any type of nurses working there who's going to be taking care of um, is there some going to be somebody on staff all the time to care for the individuals that are residing in the home if needed yes and what type of staff will you be having? Are they just a, a, a nurse? And a nurse will be, you know, on hand. Okay. Is that an RN nurse? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. And what about? Will there be people with special needs in this home? Not at this point. Uh, I'm open to that. So at this point, I'm just want to get started. So eventually, maybe I will. Okay, but not at this point. No, man. You also. Okay. Okay, but maybe later. Maybe later. Okay. Anyone else have questions of the applicant? Board of Commissioners? What kind of, what kind of traffic are you looking at coming in and out? Not much traffic. It's uh, pretty much like a uh, dead end straight pretty much and I'm the third in from the straight. So this will be a question probably for Chris or Ann. As far as like inspections for for the uh, ADA and stuff like that, I mean is, is there a criteria of say so many residents per square foot could live in a house? I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean it does seem like a, lot, a high number of residents to uh, you are correct. Uh, that is overseen by the Department of Community of Health, and there's a square footage requirement that they would have to meet to have that number of, of uh, residents there. 
uh, I don't know exactly what that square footage is at this moment, but they also have to have the fire inspection for handicapped accessibilities and life safety and for any of the fire codes. So is there sprinklers in the bottom floor? As the fire department will come out and assess, they will let me know exactly what I need to put in place. On that basement, is there access outside at that basement door? Yes, sir. Okay. Does anyone else have questions? I have another question. Are you operating, is residents live there now? No, sir. I'm looking to open until I, once I get the final approval from Department of Georgia, then I will be having individuals coming in. Do you have any pictures of what um, you anticipate it to look like? Are you adding more rooms? Are you adding up walls? No, I'm not adding any rooms. Uh, I'm looking to add an additional bathroom, which I have a permit for, uh, for the lower level. So you don't have any of this in this place already? It's proposed things that you're proposing to do? Just the uh, additional bathroom for the lower level, yes. Okay. That's the only thing I'm looking to. According to the tax assessor's site, it's showing that this is just a two-bedroom, two-bath. I don't know how. At 1,489 square feet. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, always has been a three-bedroom upstairs and downstairs was like a two-bedroom and with the two, with four windows, an additional space, which is unfinished. Was the basement, when it was completed, it was finished as a, an additional, adding two bedrooms to the house, is that correct? I had I had uh, added those. Okay. Was there a permit pulled for that? For the for the additional bedrooms in the basement. The bathroom. So you said there's two more bedrooms in the basement, correct? Right. Okay. Was a permit pulled to do that? No. There was no permit pulled to do that. No. Was there electrical done down there as well? Well, the electrical was already there. So, yes, there was electrical. There was an electrical there. box, but they had to run the that, wires right, for the yes. outlet, and that was not a permit that was pulled either, correct? Correct, ma'am. Okay. So, yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, I've got one. So you got two bathrooms in the house now, is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, so what about downstairs? Or is I, just a pulled, uh, I just pulled a permit for an additional bathroom downstairs. Thank you, sir. Um, you can have a seat. Is there anyone else that wants to talk on behalf of this application? <coughs> Step to the podium, please, and sign in. You're talking on behalf of the application, right? Sir? He's very he here. Okay. Want to sign in? Yes, sir. Sign in. Okay. My name is uh, James Kenneth Westbrooks, and this is my wife, Sandra. We live, uh, our property joins, uh, joins his property on the east side, and we have no objections to what his plans are. Okay. And we have utmost confidence in Mr. Mazeal. He is an excellent neighbor, and we, we're pulling for him all the way and wish him success on this. We're not afraid of him. We love him. That's great to have good neighbors. Thank you. Yes. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, thank you. You, you may sit down. 
Is there anyone else in favor of this application? If none, you have basically four minutes left, sir, on your application. Uh, you can come back and after if there's anybody that's against it and uh, rebut. So, is there anyone against this application? Yes, sir. Come to the podium, sir, and sign in. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mike O'Connell. I live at the farthest end of Dewberry Creek. It's a seven-tenths of a mile long, unimproved, single-family road. Seven of the ten homes on this road have two-plus children. There's a lot of people that walk. We're still lucky where we're at. The kids ride their bikes out there. There's nothing really going on. You get up to a half a mile where Ron bought this property. It's an older single family resident. Backside of the property is all fenced in. He's got livestock. There's a lake on the backside of this. Six of the families that I've managed to get and talk to because people are running around crazy do not want any kind of a business on this road. This is where we live. This is where our children were brought up. Ken and Sandra have lived there forever. On the east side, they own the vast majority of all the land there except for what I own in the back, which is a very small piece. But this being a one-way dead-end road, I already get enough traffic down there turning around at all sorts of hours. We don't think it's a proper place for this type of facility. There's, there's too much, there's wildlife, there's farm animals, there's families that, again, they just do not want any kind of business on our road. And my, myself and my wife, both, neither one want one. We've lived there over 20 years. There's just, there's no need for a business on this road. That's all I've really got to say. Does anyone on the board have questions? Uh, you stated it was an unimproved road. Exactly what do you mean by that? Well, it was a dirt road for the half of it until a few years back where they proved it, but it's pretty much a single wide road and it just wanders back. You get to where this property is, you go through a set of cow gates, I'm the only one beyond that point. And Ken and Sandra live up on the side of the mountain over here adjacent to Ron. But the first, I don't know, three tenths, four tenths of the mile when you go in there are the, the newer homes with all the families and kids. And everybody out there owns a little piece of land and you know it varies on the sizes of that. But, uh, I mean, we've had times when there's no turnaround anywhere except my driveway unless you own a driveway to somebody's house. We've had multiple incidences uh, for various reasons where a fire department had to try to come down the road, emergency vehicle, and, uh, I mean, there, there's pastures they can turn around in. But other than that, I mean, that's it. My, my trash people back down the road for the last three tenths of the mile because their trucks are too big to turn around where I'm at. Yeah, they're just not good for the neighborhood. Anyone else have a question? Board of Commissioners. Is Commissioner. the road, I'm, I'm sorry, is the road wide enough for a emergency vehicle to get down if or it's a fire the truck? On the road. If it goes off either side, then I'm mean, again, we're, we're uh, the county sends out people to cut the side of the road about twice a year. If you go off the road there in a vehicle, you're going to be stuck. It's lowland all the way through there. My question, Mr. Chairman, was uh, if this is truly uh, a business, it's not a B1 or a B2, it, it's just a special use permit for, uh, for a home, for a personal care home. So Chris or Ann. Does that constitute a business? I, in our determination, 
these type of facilities in a residential district is a quasi in, in institutional type business because they are uh, running operation. They will, if they get approved by the state or approved here, uh, obtain a bi business license through uh, our business license division and uh, they would operate as that type of business. It's not a full-fledged retail service oriented like a B1 or B2, but it is a, a small type home type business. And my understanding is if it fails, if something happens and it's not kept up like it's supposed to, um, you can, since it's a SUP in two years, you can reject it, the renewal and uh, force them to close. That's, bas that's basically the idea of, of doing it this way, isn't it? The actual special use permit would continue past the two years. That would be a land use permit. Uh, we did put in here as a stipulation that if they did not receive the state license or pretty much lost their state license for issues, that it would, uh, would turn the special use permit into a null and void. Thank you. So if this were to be sold in a couple of years and someone else purchased it, how do they, um, how do we oversee uh, more people going in, more rooms being built, um, more residents living in there? We know that uh, it's a maximum of nine, but what kind of oversight is that, is there for that? Normally we pick up on it when someone comes in that's a different owner of a property. I have one that happened out on Macklin Road. They came in and said, hey, we want to split this property up. And I looked at it, and the person that had the special use approval on it had sold the property, so it was gone. In this case here, uh, we have a provision that if it is approved, there's stipulation number five that would not allow them to transfer this special use <coughs> approval to a, a different owner. Is there any <clears throat> oversight to keep it to the we nine normally, or below? We normally pick up on it when they come in because they, they would have to come in and get approval through the state and they would need some kind of certification from the county mm -hmm. as, as well as a business license. But I mean, once the business license is obtained and let's say they're running a year, everything's going well and they're like, oh, we can make a little room in this corner here. That, <laughs> yeah, you just, you know, You'd hope you'd find out about it or it wouldn't happen, but that would be very difficult. Doesn't the state come out periodically and look at these residents to make sure? They are. I know annual visits on these facilities. I think sometimes if they see there's a need, they'll make a secondary follow-up visits. They're regulated nothing like um, the senior care facilities and the nursing homes in the state of Georgia. They're more of a freelance. Does anyone have any further questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is there any other opposition to this case? Since there's no other opposition, uh, will the owner come back to the stand, please? Have you read the five stipulations? Or are you in agreement with those five stipulations? No, I have not read them fully. Are you in agreement with us? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Do you have anything else that you want to present? Uh, I have spoken to uh, most of the uh, four additional neighbors on Dewberry Creek, and they all was for it, and that they have no objection to what I was doing. Uh, my, you know, good friend of mine. You know, we known each other since I moved in. And even one of his livestock is on my property that I, you know, helping him with, you know. So uh, I would have 
more than happy to work with any of the neighbors in the neighborhood to try to make sure everybody was comfortable with what I was doing. And as I had stated, I spoke to four, five of them, and none of them had any objection. And I, I would have loved for Mike to have spoken to me prior, <laughs> let me know what his concerns were, so we could have addressed that before coming here as neighbors. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. Um, do I have a motion and a second? Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I guess for uh, Chris, uh, according to the map, the uh, from uh, from the air, it looks like that road uh, may be two lane down to his property. Is that correct, or is it, where does the one lane start? About the uh, probably. Are you looking at the map now? Yeah. Come okay. come back up, sir. And I need to refer to Mr. Jones. He's went okay. out and inspected the road and has all the measurements. All right. It's uh, roughly around the 200 block towards East Memorial. It was around 20, 22 feet wide. And as you go north from 200, it narrowed up to about measurements of 14 and 15. So does the two lane uh, make it to the property, that hit this uh, subject property? It does not. So part of it's, a uh, uh, portion of it's one lane before you get to come to the property. Is that That's correct? correct? Okay. Thank you. I wouldn't call it one lane. I'd just say it's a 14 or 15 foot wide pavement with there's narrow. Are there any other questions? Do I have a motion? I move we deny the application. Is there a second? I second that. Okay. Okay, let's have a vote. All in favor for denial. That will be four, zero, and one for denial. Sir, your case will be tonight at seven o'clock. This is an advisory board to the commission office, to the commission board, and they have final say so on the vote tonight. So be here at seven o'clock and uh, then you'll be able to present your, or you need to get on the agenda if you want to present your case to them and then uh, an answer, you'll receive an answer tonight. Thank you. In the same room, yes. Okay. You want to Mr. Chairman, I just want to check and make sure that no one is here for 2020-03 LUP uh, application by Star Sterling who might be uh, outside of this room. Okay, do you need to... Uh... Okay. No. no, you're good. You're no. good, Star. You're good. Okay, Mr. Chairman, next application is 2020-03 LUP application by Star S. Sterling requesting a land use permit on approximately three acres to operate Star Custom Cycles by appointment only. Property is located in land lot 194 District 2, I mean District 1, Section 3. Its uh, address is 7791 Villarica Highway. It's in Commission Post 2. Uh, staff has recommended three stipulations if it's, if it's approved. Uh, we have no noted opposition on it. And just a quick little history on it. Uh, Ms. Sterling operated under a LUP about 20 years ago with a cycle shop there. It's, uh, and at that time, we never did have any issues or complaints. And uh, she's back, and this is the process to <coughs> back in that direction. And she is present. 
Ms. Sterling, will you come to the podium and sign in, please? My name is Star Sterling, and as Mr. Robinson said, I did have a land use permit. Um, back then, it was 7793 Villarica Highway. Actually, it was 2020, 2265, and then that's when all the addresses got all weird and the county got bigger. So now it's, it was 7793, and my dad had the other part of the shop. Anyway, through years of some family issues, God restored our relationship back, and I'm, I would like to reopen the shop. Basically, um, I have to comply with dealer specifications on, under the state to um, get a dealer's license to buy and sell to go to auctions, and et cetera. And that's what I want to do. I don't want like a bunch of people in and out and things like that. I've already installed like a huge iron estate gate and things like that where you pull into the shop because um, I do have my elderly dad living with me at my, in my home. So I don't want like a bunch of disruption and things like that. I just want to, you know, do the best I can and paint and sell some motorcycles and just have peace. And I've already spoken with my neighbors and everybody's, you know, totally fine with everything. It's, I don't disrupt anybody. It's not like some raging motorcycle show on TV or something weird like that. I'm not like that. I'm very, very low key. So I guess that's it. You guys have any questions for me? Does anyone on the board have questions? Yeah. Your hours of operation. Um, well, right now, due to the corona, <laughs> I really prefer to do appointment only. So that's kind of where I'm at. And I've always kind of been that way. If I have to have some formal hours, I will absolutely, you know, come up with something maybe like four days a week or something like that. Um, but I really prefer appointment only. I also am a contractor with Hellbender Harley Davidson. So I will be, you know, I have work from them that I would get in the shop that it would already come to me apart. It wouldn't be like clients coming in and out or anything like that. So it would, you know, plus my dad is, you know, next in the house. I don't, I just don't want a bunch of disruption. Is the medical facility beside you, you still in operation? Yes, it is. Their fence is like falling down on my side. But other than, yes, they're still there. Tanner. <laughs> Anyone else have a question? This is where you live, correct? This operation? Well, no, the the house, it was it used to be one partial of land, and then when we did the land use permit, um, and initially it was split off, and then things happen when the family, and then now it's restored back. That's why there's no issues with variances or anything, because I, I it's all mine now. It's all... Like, um, but it's two separate addresses. So 7793 is my home, and 7791 is where the shop is, but it's not put back together. It's still separated, but it is under, in my name. Okay. And the hours of operation wouldn't interfere with, uh, say, nighttime, and your neighbors having a problem with loud noises? No, I mean, okay. I wouldn't, no. I mean, if we okay. had something going on, I mean, I'm very, I'm, I'm, I'm very close with the Fullers next door and Kevin and across the backfield and things like that. So, I mean, I, I would never do anything to bother them. They know that. Okay. I'm Thank you. very respectful of them. Okay. You may sit down. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else in favor of this application? Not seeing anyone. Is there anyone against this application? Okay. Uh, can I get a motion? Mr. Chairman. Yes. Can I just, uh, two points, I, I just wanted to yes. make sure it's in the record. Uh, she is correct that the two parcels are all under one ownership. It's a total of three acres. And to do the rural business, it requires a minimum of three acres so that is met and the second thing the days of oper days and operation requiring access by the public customers or vendors or clients shall be monday through saturday daylight hours only 
just wanted to clear that up. Thank you. A question. Was she approved of the three stipulations? Yes, I was going to ask that. Anyone else? Board of Commissioners, anyone else have a question? Do I have a motion? Approved with the three stipulations. Approved with the three stipulations. Second. Second by Mr. Hanson. All in favor? That'd be four zero one one and approved. Mr. Chairman, on the next application, I just wanted to, again, follow through with checking to make sure anyone that might be outside the room in the lobby yeah. has opportunity to come in. Uh, it is being broadcast on a monitor out there in the lobby, so if we can give them just a couple minutes, they okay. can come in. This is case 2020-13-Z. Uh, okay, 2020-13-Z application by Elite Engineering LLC, Jonathan Jones, to rezone 17.3 acres from R2 suburban residential and R7 multifamily to R55 active adult residential to complete the second phase of, an, of the existing City Crest Village development. The property is located in land lots 256 and 321 district 3 section 3 south of graves road on cedar crest uh, cedar crest road and it's at cedar crest village drive it's in commission post four uh, we've had uh, numerous calls emails in opposition and concerns on this one and uh, staff has recommended approval with seven uh, staff stipulations however the applicant has also volunteered 10 Additional stipulations which are printed and in packets in the back if any, anyone needs with those and the applicant is present Please come up and sign in Good afternoon Planning Commission uh, Board of Commissioners staff and public. My name is Jonathan Jones, and I'm with the lead engineering I am representing the rezoning of 17.3 acres. Um, one thing to be noted is the proposed quantity of units is denoted as 72. We have actually further reduced that down to 70 units, um, which is a 4-0 multiplier. The R55 ordinance currently allows for five units per acre. Um, I think the ordinance also allows for a lot width less than uh, what we're proposing. We're proposing a 60-foot wide lot width. We're also proposing, I think the current uh, R55 ordinance allows for a 15 foot perimeter buffer. We have increased that to a 35 foot perimeter buffer. Um, we've also um, voluntarily agreed to offset all front architecture. We um, require all front, uh, front elevations to have front porches that are a minimum of four by six. So you don't get that stoop look, you actually get a front porch look. Um, we've also requiring windows in any gabled roof. So you just don't get the blank siding look, there, there, there'll be a window there, with, even if it's a, a faux window, it'll still be a window. Um, we're proposing combination of brick, stone, siding, shakes, and cedar, at least two required of which siding and shakes does not count as two. So we're, we're looking for a mixture of frontages and looks to break up the architectural of the community. Everything will be a mandatory three bedroom, two bath, mandatory two car garage. Um, owner developer also agrees to build a 28 by 60 pavilion 
with walking trails and a garden area that will be centralized in this portion of the development. We're proposing sidewalks on both sides of the street that will ultimately tie to the pavilion garden area. And um, I believe that is it on the voluntary stipulations. Um, as Chris said, staff has recommended approval. Um, this is in conformance with the 2017 comprehensive plan and meets the requirements set forth in the future, develop, uh, future land development map. Um, the remainder of my time, I'll, I'll be happy to answer any questions and or for rebuttal. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Is there anyone else in favor of this application? Step to the podium, please, sir. Sign in. Yes. Well, that's pretty easy. <clears throat> I live at 4478 Cedar Crest, which is just past the part four there or whatever. My question is, is the, the Jonathan, you know, that piece of the butt's up to me. What is what is that? What's happening with that? Okay. Is that part of sir, this as well? Sir, 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 sir. Uh, address me. Oh, uh, sorry. Well, my question. Are you in favor of it? I, I'm fine with yes. I mean, okay. Yes. I'm just making sure. Yeah, I just I want to know what's happening next to next to me because I see it's blocked out. That's my question. I, don't, I want to know if it's part of it or what. If so, what are the setbacks off my property line and everything else? Okay. And you're wanting to know what the hatched out, the, the dark area is yes. on the map. Okay. Do you have any other questions? Um, that, and if they're going to clean up down there, <clears throat> if the present owners are going to clean up where the retention, or where all their, their, um, where their uh, BMPs are lacking as far as drainage, which overruns down in our drive and all that stuff when it floods. And your name again? Jeff Binkley, B-I-N-K-L-E-Y. Okay, Mr. Binkley, is that all you have? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Uh -huh. Is there anyone else? Yes. You're in favor of this application? Yes, sir. Okay, step to the podium, please. Do I need to sign in? Or yes, sir, sign in. And your name? My name's John Moore. John Moore. Um, so I am the developer for the property. I represent the owners. And I met in a special meeting with the uh, next door HOA for the Cedar Crest Village last Tuesday night. They actually set up the meeting after our original application. And they have a number of issues, not so much with our development or what we're building or the elevations and that sort of thing, but more with the subdivision that, they've, that they're a part of now. And so when we purchased the land from the developer um, that did the first section, he has left the HOA um, in a little bit of a pickle. There's a number of things that haven't been turned over to them properly. And we did agree um, with them and wrote a letter to them and actually a formal letter of intent and agreed to address all those issues. Um, I don't think there's a need to air them here, but we did, we did agree, and Mr. Stover was at the meeting, um, so was Scott, um, that we would tie any land disturbance permit to us having solved those problems. Um, for them because it is just a, it is just a mess um, the previous developer has left it in a little bit of a pickle and so I just wanted to make it put it on the public record that we've agreed to do that make it perfectly clear to the association um, that we do intend to solve those problems from them, even though it's not on our property and the way we're able to make that statement is it was stipulated that that would survive our contract our ability to provide some leverage to see that those issues were solved. I just want to make that point. So that would solve the issue that Mr. Bankley has as far as the uh, drainage then? 
I don't think Mr. Binkley is in the Cedar Crest Village um, property. <coughs> so so that's, that's a different issue then? Correct. Okay. I, I've actually not heard that issue, but I think that Jonathan can handle that. Okay. And the question he had as far as the dark area there, was that? That's that something Jonathan, you can... I'll let Jonathan address that okay, be from fine. an engineering standpoint. Okay. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you. Is there anybody else in favor? If none, is there anyone against this application? Okay, just form a line and you've got 15 minutes. Good afternoon. My name is Bill Curtis, a homeowner and resident of Cedar Crest Village. One of our HOA board members is here, Bob Strazella. The other board members are traveling or not feeling well. And we also have some of our uh, residents here today. I have been appointed by our HOA board to speak on their behalf. Sir, so <clears throat> which HOA would that be? Uh, Cedar Crest Village HOA. Okay, thank you. Cedar Crest Village is a 55 plus neighborhood with attached homes in a quad arrangement totaling 15 quads and a clubhouse. It is zoned R7 and is adjacent and north of the property in this application. I am going to respectfully present and request st six stipulations and Chris is handing out a copy so you can have that. <clears throat> I will be referring to the property and development in this rezoning application as the new development. Regarding the first stipulation, Cedar Crest Village Drive and Cedar Crest Village Way are the only roads to and from the new development. They are private roads and not county roads. These roads were freshly paved last year and are still in excellent condition. We are extremely concerned about the deterioration of these roads that will occur from the heavy trucks used during development and construction. We do not want to let be left with any cost of repaving these roads. We request stipulation number one, Upon completion of construction in the new development, the owner developer at their expense will freshly pave Cedar Crest Village Drive and Cedar Crest Village Way to restore them to county engineering specifications, including any needed repair of curbing and storm drains. During the time of construction and until completion, the owner developer will keep these roads in good condition, free of potholes and breaks up in the pavement. Number two, our HOA should not pay for any utilities used in the new development we request this stipulation. Owner developer must not use any water that goes through the existing Cedar Crest Village master water meter and will not connect into it. All utilities for the new development, including sewer and water, street lights, gas and electricity must be separate from the existing Cedar Crest Village and with separate invoicing payments and accounts. Number three, a neighborhood adjoining ours should have similar home values. In a letter dated August 19th to our HOA president, Mr. John Moore noted several stipulations that they have submitted regarding the look of the homes, including photo examples. To confirm this, we have included those stipulations with our request for stipulation number three. And this is gonna be somewhat repetitive, but the new development will contain dwellings of 1,800 to 2,400 square feet with two car garages and at least three bedrooms and two full baths. The fronts will be offset, meaning not flat across the front. Homes will have front porches at least four feet deep and six feet wide. There will be a window on the second floor, on any second floor gable facing the street. The exterior front of the homes will have a combination of materials consisting of at least two of brick, natural stone, siding, or shakes, but never just siding and shakes without either brick or natural stone. Home values will start at 335,000 in today's dollars, the architecture and look of the homes will be very similar to those shown in the photos as attached in Exhibit A that you have. There seems to be a lack of off-street parking on the site plan. Off-street parking is needed for the large truck for weekly landscape maintenance and other vehicles. And when extra temporary parking is needed, we request stipulation number four. The new development will have sufficient off-street parking places located within the new development. We are not aware of a landscaping plan for the new development. Stipulation number five, the landscaping plan or standards for the new development will be similar to the landscaping of the existing Cedar Crest Village. 
There are parcels of property in Cedar Crest Village that are intended to be common property and owned by Cedar Crest Village HOA. This property includes parcels that are open space, green space, and the parcels that contain the roads and the clubhouse amenity. Refer to your uh, exhibit B. This property has not been released or turned over to the Cedar Crest Village HOA. In that August 19th letter from Mr. John Moore to our, to our HOA president, Mr. Moore stated that he would make an arrangement that a land disturbance permit would not be issued unless certain issues are cleared up. One of these issues is the ownership of these common property parcels by, by the Cedar Crest Village HOA. We also have been working on a letter of intent, as Mr. Moore has indicated, documenting his intentions to resolve these issues. And right after I speak, Bob, our, our other board member here, Bob uh, Strozella, will speak to that right after I'm done. We request uh, stipulation number six. Owner developer will not request or receive a land disturbance permit for the new development unless the following parcels are owned by the Cedar Crest Village HOA, they are free of liens, 2019 property taxes are paid, and declarant rights for Cedar Crest Village are released to the Cedar Crest Village HOA, and those parcels are listed on your exhibit. In conclusion, without these requested stipulations, our, HO, our HOA board does not support this rezoning application. We do question if this is a suitable adjoining development and if it will be compatible with ours. Many residents are uneasy, unsure, and skeptical of this new development and are concerned about the extra traffic and speeding through our neighborhood. We appreciate the hardworking staff within the Community Development Department, and we appreciate you, the Planning Commission, and the Board of Commissioners. We are thankful for your due diligence and oversight in this matter, and we trust that you will make the right decision. Thank you. And now, uh, Bob Strozella will speak. Your name again, sir? Uh, I'm sorry. I am Bob Strozella. Uh, I'm on the board of the current HOA, and, and in the beginning, I started the HOA for the community. Um, I live in the community, <coughs> uh, and uh, I think it's important to note that we have about 20% uh, of our, our community, you know, even though it's 55 plus, are widows or widowers that live in our community on fixed incomes. Um, but why am I here? Um, what I'd like to do is, Bill mentioned a letter from of our, our spoken agreement between Mr. Moore and the community. And what is being distributed is the, a letter of intent from Mr. Moore, uh, which I'd like to have submitted into record with the understanding that we have agreed in principle to the items that have been outlined within that letter. However, uh, since we've only received this letter a few hours ago, we would like the zoning board, allow our board, our HOA, to have the content of these stipulations further defined and resub a resubmitted document be considered as Mr. Moore's voluntary commitment for approval. So be added to what you already have. Um, and we thought it was important that a board member deliver that letter to you as representatives of the community. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in opposition to this application? Yes, sir. Step up. Step forward and sign in, please. Good afternoon. My name is Will Harrell. If I may call your attention to the uh, map on the board. The section to the upper right of all the yellow that's shown there is, is where I live. 
my, I go from, <laughs> I got borders on this development that's already there, plus on the new one, and it goes all the way over to that dark line, which I do hope is not thought to be a access road for this, for this property. Uh, if I may, this is not my first time to be here to speak like this. The last time this developer wanted to go from one size unit to a smaller unit. And I brought up at that time that, <coughs> back to the map, if I may, the, low, the lower part of my property is a squiggly line. That squiggly line is a little creek. The, the culverts in the development that's already there are 48 inch wide. And it runs into, into the little creek, which runs down. And that black line is where a road is. Uh, there's a 24 inch culvert there to dump it into. What's happened is silt was built up, things were washed down from there. Places that I could, I could get my lawnmower to a few years ago, I can't now. But the point is, there was two requirements that I asked for last time. Uh, one was no, no traffic on that road that I just pointed out. And the second was do something about cleaning up all the silts washed down. And I believe that was agreed to. Nothing's been done, nothing at all. In this, it says that the applicant has met with the adjoining property owners and agreed to voluntary conditions. I ain't seen them. My wife hasn't seen them. Nobody's talked to us. Uh, I asked that this developer be brought into line to do what he says he's going to do before this uh, approval is given for this. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Step forward Question. and sign in, please. Sir. Question. Sir. Sir. Somebody. Somebody. He, he was already on the way. He's next one. Hello, my name is Chris Farr. I'm a landscaper. I was a landscaper on the phase one development. I would like to know who the owners of the second phase is, if they're related to either the first phase one, because originally the owners of phase one also own phase two. John Moore purchased it or the new, there's a new company that owns it. I'd like to know who those people are. Are they the wives of the other owners or are they part of the other owners of this new corporation? Because in phase, phase, the first phase, the owners didn't pay me for the, my work that I did at the end of the job. And Mr. Moore represented the gentleman, his name was Dale, um, Dale Howard. He represented him to help straighten the mess out according to him and they just never ever paid me for the work I did. Also, I worked for John Moore on several other developments, four in total, where he also never paid me for the work I did. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Yes, sir. On the map, if I could uh, get some clarification. On the very most right, there appears to be a dark strip which looks like a driveway or access area. I think one of the previous guys might have been asking about that. What does that represent on the map there? Uh, can anyone explain? And what is your name again, sir? My name is Scott Perkins. <clears throat> I own the property to the right of that line. We plan to uh, build a home there and we bought it because it was 
idyllic, rural in nature, um, very quiet, and I can't imagine um, that becoming a, a public road to a development with a population of hundreds of people. Um, is, is it clear what I'm asking, sir, that if I had a pointer, I could point to it? <clears throat> yes, sir. It's clear, it's clear what you're talking about, right there on the right where the pointer is. Is that right? Yes, sir. <clears throat> I don't know what the dark strip means. Can anyone explain? Yes, sir. We'll, we'll try to get you an answer. Um, okay, so you know to my concerns that, that I don't want that to be a road. A, a heavily traveled road into this new development, correct? I, I understand that's your opposition, okay. yes, sir. Anyone else? If not, uh, Jonathan, can you come back to the... Yes, got several questions. Yes, sir. Um, first, you want to... Can you answer a question about... Is that a road access roadway that he is? Um, yes, sir. I, quite honestly, um, to my knowledge, that is not part of this property, and it has no intended use for this property. I am not certain why it is hatched in that color. I did not create this map, but there's no intent to utilize that property whatsoever for the use of this development. Okay. Um, the other question about the other dark hatched area, the V-shaped. Yes, Mr. Um, Mr. Binkley um, owns the, the, the home that abuts that. Yes. That five acres was acquired and added to this. So the prior property was um, zoned R7, did not incorporate this five acres. So that acreage is the part of the zoning application that's currently zoned R2. You'll see that there's a zoning request here for an R2 and an R7 to be converted to an R55. That would be the R2 portion of the property. Um, I know that um, Mr. Binkley has concerns about um, uh, uh, having a fence or something that abuts his property um, for, for safety purposes, um, and I haven't had an opportunity to uh, have that conversation with Mr. Moore, so I'll lend uh, that, that question and, and decision to be uh, provided by Mr. Moore, and, but I can answer any additional engineering-related or property-related questions. I will say that um, as it relates to the gentleman who lives, I think it's on Pickaboo Path, um, that creek uh, will, will obviously have to meet all of the requirements um, set forth by the EPD. And if it is in violation, um, I'm, I'm not, I was not made aware of it. Um, but I know that that property has sat since 2007 when the economy um, went, went under. And to my knowledge, and I'll let Mr. Moore also further reiterate this, that Dell Howard has um, no involvement whatsoever in this portion of this project. Um, and I believe that he is fully sold all of his rights out to, to Mr. Moore, but I'll let Mr. Moore talk about that in, in greater detail. Um, as it relates to the landscaping, um, you know, I, I don't know that Paulding County has a, a defined landscape ordinance per se, but I, I do know that the landscaping, um, especially if we're talking 330,000 plus homes, will be at or equivalent, I would say, to what's already there in the existing facility. I mean, you can't sell a home above the 300 mark and, and not have a pretty substantial landscape package. Um, so, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know as it relates. Um, I think most of the other comments, though, that was that's part of the HOA's uh, concerns were part of the, if not in full, the voluntary 10 stipulations that we had would come up with with the different facades and the architectural controls and, 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 and that, that, that stuff. Um, so, you know, I, I'd be happy to answer anything that I might have missed, but I, I do think that that covers a lot of the questions and concerns, except for the, the items that Mr. Moore may, may have to lend us some additional information to. Okay. Have you or Mr. Moore seen the letter of intent? Is that something y'all participated in that the yes, Homeowner sir. Association? Yes, sir. Okay. And it, it's basically a reiteration of the zoning stipulations that we voluntarily placed on the project. Um, I don't know of anything that's not in one that's compared to the other, frankly. I think they're, they're one in the same. Um, I know that, that uh, the verbiage about holding a land disturbance permit in exchange for um, deeding the property over to the HOA is something that's probably not clearly defined. If it needs to be placed as a stipulation, I think Mr. Moore would be 
willing to, to place that. Um, I just think it's a verbiage that we didn't know exactly how to word it, and maybe Mr. Uh, Jason there can help us with the legalities of how to how to add a stipulation that that keeps Mr. Moore bound to his agreement with the HOA, so the HOA doesn't come up with a short end of the stick. Okay. Does any, does any of the board have a question? Uh, so what's the purpose of rezoning it from R7 to R55? Is it economics or what is it? Well, so the R7 category was typically and originally created for the quad type product. Um, the quad product is not something that is, is actually um, as desired now compared to what's called the cottage concept. And, and the difference is, is you share a common driveway with three or four neighbors that you enter and exit all at once. So if you get you know, a, a large crowd at one facility or the other, it can cause some complications with people getting in and out of their property. The cottage concept is the same scenario where it's all a self-contained community where the, everything's taken care of, the garbage and the HOA handles all of the grass and everything. It's just that they own their own lot and they own their own home. Basically the same square footage, basically the same homes, the same interior, exterior, what the concept is is that they own their single unit and therefore they're not bound and controlled driveway wise and access wise by, by you know the other two or three tenants that may be having a, uh, a function going at the same time. So it's a similar product, it's just a, uh, uh, it's a different way of presenting it. But to answer your question, the R7 allows for 3.8 units net per acre. Our proposal is four units per acre. So it's not a significant difference. The true difference is you can't build an R55 product in an R7 zone property because of setbacks and requirements for attached roof lines and such. Chris can probably reiterate or, or maybe even go into more detail about what I'm, what I'm saying, but um, the R7 was geared more towards either a quad or a townhome type attached product where you have to be attached by common roof line or or gables or, or, or such as that. And that's not the product or the intent for what we wanted to, to build here. So what, what's the typical uh, square footage and what would be the uh, typical uh, sales uh, parameters, sale price parameters? Um, so from, and I, I can let John Moore talk about the sales price because I've, I've not had that conversation with him. The first time I had heard that sales price was, was a while ago when it's mentioned. Um, these are 60 foot wide lots, whereas the R55 zoning actually, I think, allows 40 foot. So we increased it to, to provide more space between the homes, which reduced our original um, application from 76 units down now to 70. Um, the house footprint, uh, it, it's going to be a minimum 2,100 square foot heated with a two car garage. So when you add that into the mix, you're looking at 25, 2,600 minimum square feet. Um, and that's that's the minimum range. Um, everything will be, you know, meeting architectural uh, requirements that we spelled, you know, spelled out, which is quite honestly over and beyond anything I think Paulding County has in their ordinance now for uh, maybe maybe LDQRD might have something that's similar to that from an architectural control standpoint. Um, you know, I, that that's that's basically it. You're getting a, a wider lot than R55 allows. You're getting less density than R55 allows. We've placed zoning stipulations on us that prohibit the architectural from looking bland and and quite honestly like a, a Cracker Jack house. I mean, we, we've, we've truly tried to put something in place here that improves the R55 category as a whole, especially for this community. So, um, you know, I was at the last hearing. I know R55 is a concern. That's why we put extra effort into trying to achieve something here that's not just a blanket R55 and trying to get five units an acre, because that's not what we intended to do. Uh, Jonathan, uh, so they uh, presented a, a document here from the Cedar Crest Village HOA Board of Directors requested stipulations, six stipulations. You, do you all agree to those six stipulations? Uh, no, I'll let Mr. Moore answer that question. I have a few more questions. Yes, Will you do too? Okay. Um, hey, Jonathan, on um, the off-street parking, are you all going to have off-street parking? So with a 60-foot wide drive, I mean a 60-foot lot, our intention would be to have a, a two-car uh, driveway, plus it's got two-car garage. We, we were not proposing any 
off street parking, but we've increased the perimeter buffer to 35 feet. If, 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 if staff or, or, or planning commission or board commissioners wants us to reduce that buffer back down, then we can add off street parking. But we felt like a, a perimeter, a buffer that encompasses the entire development that's <coughs> roughly two, two, uh, over two times the required amount currently for R55 was a better, um, I guess, a give to the community and the surrounding communities. Um, you know, I, I I think that there may be some opportunity to put some parking around that pavilion um, that, that the landscape guy could pop potentially use the park and, and, and do what they need to do. Um, but, you know, that, it was not planned at this okay. time, no ma'am. And then uh, last question for me is the letter of intent that was um, submitted the one gentleman had said that he had not had an opportunity, that the HOA has not have, had an opportunity to review that. Would you agree to allow them to review it and then we come back and we finalize everything? Yeah, I'll yield that to, to Mr. Moore since it's his project and his timeline that he's under, so I'll, I'll let him adhere to that question if that's okay with, with you guys. Yes, in, in the buffer around number four, what is gonna be in that buffer? Okay, so um, the, the darker property, not, yes, not, darker not property. that road going out, it doesn't no, have anything darker. to this. The darker property is part of, of this development. Um, so it will be, that's the R2, and, and the, the yellow is the R7 property. Mm -hmm. So it as a whole makes up the 17.3 acres. Mr. Binkley owns the, the large estate home there directly to the south of the dark, and his concern um, is that he, he would like a fence and, and some, some landscaping there to, you know, to buffer both his, himself and his family from the community and the community from, from them. So, um, and, and I'll let Mr. Moore uh, answer uh, wh whether that's amenable to him, but um, does that hopefully answer your question as to what that dark? Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Commissioners? Okay, Mr. Moore. Oh, okay. So what was was a uh, the stipulation that he's talking about tying it to the uh, land disturbance permit? What? Okay, um, so part of the HOA's um, issues, and I'm not trying to speak on behalf of them. I'm trying to regurgitate what they. But is they got left high and dry with with Dell Howard in, in the original because some things that were supposed to be turned over, uh, like clubhouse and such as that, were not properly turned over and whatever. Well, Mr. Moore has the ability contractually to make those things happen, and he's willing to um, place his land disturbance permit on the line that those things will happen, or Paulding County has, the, um, has a device that can hold his project up until at which time those things do happen, which obviously would be financially a, uh, a very important factor to, to make him adhere to what his agreement is. Does that answer? Yeah, that's fine. I got a, a few more questions too as far as just, and it's probably in here and I'm just not okay. seeing it, but as far as the streets and I know the water, I know how the water's gonna happen for sure, but what about the streets? George? Yeah, um, and, and so I, I'm glad you said that, Ryan. We, we would have zero intent or need to connect to the, the water system that's in Cedar Crest Village. It's on a master meter. So we'll have to connect to the, to the main line and bring it to our development. The sanitary sewer is actually a lift station that's already on site, so our sewer would not go into their sewer. Their sewer actually flows onto this track and, and goes to the same common lift station, which is the way it's always been planned and wouldn't affect. Um, as it relates to the reuse, um, I don't truly know the answer as to whether we can tie to their reuse or not, but worst case is we would bring um, a reuse main from Cedar Crest to, to, to this development as well. Um, Mr. Moore has the ability to deed over streets and, and utilities or not. Uh, when we originally met, um, Mr. Green had a little bit of reluctancy to want to accept a whole lot until he had opportunity to, I think, evaluate it and make sure that that's in the best interest of Paulding County. So uh, that'll be a Paulding County decision unless I'm wrong about that. But he does have the ability to to deed that, that deed that infrastructure over if that is so desired by the county. Yeah, I was just wondering as far as there's something we need to look at. If from your side, George, do we need to do anything now? Okay. Is that 
Is that okay? Can I turn it over to Mr. Moore now? Yeah. Does the water department, do you have an issue? Yeah, with what we call phase two, this new development, uh, being fee simple and the first phase being uh, private, uh, obviously we, we wouldn't, like Jonathan just said, we wouldn't have that on the master meter. But with the private road coming in and through phase one, you would then have a private uh, water main and a publicly owned water main side by side. We would we would need that to be an easement of some of some sort to um, to make sure that we're we're far enough away from that property. And who would you need the easement from the homeowner association? It, that would make sense. Yes. Mr. Moore. All right, so I'm gonna to try to unwind some of this mess if I can a little bit and I'll keep it brief. Um, Del Howard and Andy Wing have developed exactly one thing in their life and that phase one is it. I happen to know them. <laughs> Andy Wing went to prison last January, and he's going to be there for 30 years. So you can just let your imagination run wild. And then in um, May, Dell Howard cut his hand off in his basement. And so I got called and asked to be a friend, even though when they did this development originally, they stole my idea that I would developed in other places around the other counties. So there in lies the mess. When they got stuck in 2008 with their sewer problem, I came and helped with the pump station. And I've been there, and I've just been friendly. I've tried to take that same approach with the neighbors, and I genuinely apologize for not having talked to the neighbor with the creek problem. Um, that is not my style, and the fact that we missed that is not cool in the slightest. So we will meet with you and do right by that. As it relates to the fence, um, I'm not a big fan of fences in and out of senior facilities because you don't have seniors that are running across the fence line, um, but you have a fence that you have to maintain. And so because we maintain all of the exteriors on this and we don't want to go through someone's yard to maintain a rear fence, we don't think it's in the best interest. But I would prefer a landscape buffer but that's something we could discuss. Um, it's not a big problem. As it relates to the off-site parking, I don't think that's a good idea. And I think it's because of the nature of the difference in the product. So just to recount, this property is already zoned right now for a number of quads, for 11 different quads um, right back there. But it doesn't have an age restriction on it. So when we bring this, there was no, there was no zoning for um, age restricted at the time. When we bring this under the age restricted, that's a big pickup actually for the association next door in its present state or in the state that it was in prior to my helping get it purchased. I'm not the purchaser. I'm more or less retired and I help get developments done, but I'm not a, I'm not a guy who takes financial risk anymore. Um, but as far as the um, development goes, I made sure that we could either deed the streets over to the county because that was the request that we received at one point or that we could grant an easement and do it that way. And in the solution for purchasing the land, we intend to put it all together. But back to the parking, I lost my train of thought there. Inside of the zoning, the way it is, I mean, inside the project as it is right now, if anyone is going to pull in to do anything, they're pulling into a very private area because there are four different units that are sharing a driveway. And so it's, it's not like a normal neighborhood in that regard. But neighborhoods all over the, you know, all, all over the county are maintained, you know, the trucks park on the side of the road, they do their work, and they move on. As it relates to parking, it's not needed because everyone's coming from their driveway and our amenity is in the very center of the project. So I think that addresses the questions that were um, brought up, but I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. 
So you're in, you're willing to do a landscape buffer along the Binkley property line? Absolutely. Yeah, something that serves a better purpose that we don't have to maintain. That I just think it's more commonsensical. We just don't agree with the stipulation for the off-site parking. I don't think it makes sense. Okay. And but we do agree that I did write that letter of intent. There was a, quite a bit of back and forth between the association. By the way, they've been very good at communicating, and I genuinely appreciate your presentation. I just thought that was super well done. Um, and you're agreeable to the holding the land disturbance permit until absolutely. the property in question is yep. taken care of with the yep. homeowner association? Yes, sir. I okay. promised that in the meeting when Mr. Stover was there, and I promised it in writing, and I'm promising it now. The HOA uh, gentleman that talked to us a few minutes ago presented six new stipulations. Part of them probably have already been incorporated, but are you in agreement with these six stipulations? I am not. Okay. Let's take them go one by one. Yes, sir. Number one. Oh, look at him. Oh, I see. I thought All you were going to read Sorry. No. No, I just let you. He's, Chris right. is trying to help me, and I'm. I'm said I waved him off. All right. <laughs> I apologize. That's all right. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Of course. Yes. Yes. All right. Number yes. two. Yes. Number three. Yes, sir. Number four. No, sir. Okay. Number five. Yes, sir. And number six. Yes, sir. All right. So we got five out of six. You've already talked about the off street parking. I yes, think. sir. That's been covered. All right. Now, he did include, and this is something that I wish everybody who comes before this board, maybe as I'm a woman and I'm visual, but I love to see pictures because, you know, we can say that it's going to look like this and it's going to have, but I want to see what it looks like. So they did attach some pictures. Looks like a great product, you know, that they're asking for you to build. Is that something that your product is going to look like? Um, actually, that's what I offered up to build. Okay. Yes. Yeah, looks great. Yes, ma'am. That's why we actually put those stipulations in writing because those characteristics are what make a nice product. Right. And I like the fact that you've, um, they've asked for 18 to 2,400, but I heard Jonathan say they're going to be 25 to 2,600, correct, square you, feet? You did not hear that. I did not hear no, that. No, it, it is 18 to 2,400 and three bedrooms, two baths. Okay, I thought I heard somewhere 25 to 2,600 minimum. That's for the garage. With including garage. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. This is heated square footage only. Okay, very good. And but do I, we did, have I a, did not actually hear that part. And I know we as the county, we can't set, say you have to sell, you know, certain product a certain amount. We, we, we I, don't I, do that. But do you have an idea of what the uh, So the very reason for that, we actually, sh we actually created a chart for the association when we met. And the real emphasis needs to be on the price per square foot. Right. And so Paulding County lags behind Cobb a little bit in this, but we are using that product that is selling super well in Cobb into the Paulding side and hoping that we can pull those square footage prices from what now stand uh, in, in some of the Windsong product that's located in Seven Hills mm -hmm. in the high 160s and mid 170s up towards the 212 to 220 that Cobb County is getting. So it's our intention to have an 1,800 square foot product that would start at about that 335. That, that's, not, that's not plucked from air. Okay. Um, and then that square footage price actually helps all of the product, which is at 2,400 square feet in the adjacent neighborhood. Well, I think it helps all the county. It helps everybody, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Pretty helps everybody. OK, so you're familiar with the 17 stipulations. Plus, you're okay with two more stipulations with the landscape buffer along the Bankley line and the uh, land disturbance permit held until, and we'll let the county attorney uh, let us know how we're going to uh, word that, but you're okay with those two. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, are the commissioners, do you have any questions? I got another question, Thanks. Roger. All right. So you're connecting on, are you connecting on to, uh, you are connecting on to the streets of phase one, is that correct? Yes, sir. 
Uh, that was originally the in intentional way to get to those lots in the back. Uh, so the finished course paving or the top coat, it's all been completed in phase one on it the has. streets? Yes, sir. It and has. we have nothing to do with that. But, well, I understand that. But, but, it, but it has that, been completed and we will repair it as the as Yeah, as I understand it's stipulated. that, but it's a private development. Is that is that right? Yes, sir. Okay, so you've got all this construction traffic, concrete trucks, lumber trucks, and dump trucks, and all coming in and out. So um, the uh, integrity of the pavement uh, should be protected somewhat. Or other. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's why the stipulation's there, that we must bring the... The, the, the roads into full repair. This letter of intent that you signed, you want that entered into the agreement also? Yes, please. But that letter of intent does not address uh, Mr. Aston's point, but, but the other well, stipulations. The, the, right. the last part of it does where it talks about the road maintenance. The HOA mm -hmm. addresses that number one. Yeah, you're right. Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mr. Okay. Blair. Yeah. I've got a question for Chris, I think, probably. Uh, is there a required bond that if this developer doesn't do what he says, like the former developer, that we've got money to come back and finish this product like it should be finished? The, the intent on the streets in the, on the second phase uh -huh. is private. Okay. Uh, we will have we will hold them to build to county specifications and standards. Okay. Uh, do we normally do a bond on private streets? We don't normally on a private street. Okay. Uh, I think that first import that first stipulation is very important. Uh -huh. uh, that they have uh, the homeowner association is uh, asking the developers owners to agree into that if they damage any of the existing sh private street to the current phase one Cedar Crest Village that they are agreeing to repair it that means that's something we can oversee during the planning processes and review processes because of that stipulation okay. and mr. chairman I just wanted to point out one thing in the six presented stipulations by the homeowners association stipulation number three covers the voluntary stipulations that's printed nine through 14 I just want to point that out okay Are there any other questions from the board or for board of commissioners? Mr. Chairman, before a vote, uh, if yes. I could just clarify what the applicant is agreeable to yes. here for the purposes of the record. Mr. Moore, just to be clear, you are agreeable to all 17 zoning stipulations that are printed uh, in the package as to the document entitled 2020 13-Z Cedar Crest Village HOA Board of Directors requested stipulations. You are in agreement with voluntarily including as stipulations of your zoning numbers one, two, three, five, and six. And you have told this board that you intend to comply with your letter of intent. Is that accurate? Yes, sir, it is. Also, there will be number 18 with the landscape buffer along the Bankley property line and number 19, never how you would want to word that to hold the land disturbance permit until those uh, property issues are settled with the Homeowner Association. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Moore, is that is that correct? You're agreeable to that? Um those items mentioned by the uh, chairman I would just say that number 19 is redundant because the letter of intent does it does cover that requirement to all right <coughs> to handle the HA just it, just to clarify number 19 it is potentially the same as number six on the HOA's requested stipulations which states owner developer will not request or receive an LDP <coughs> for the new development unless the following parcels are owned by the Cedar Crest Village HOA, they are free of liens, 2019 property taxes paid, and the declarant rights for Cedar Crest Village are released 
to Cedar Crest Village HOA with the four tax parcels listed. Correct. And you're agreeable to that? I am. All right. Okay. How would how do we need to word that as far as the inclusion of these two letters of intent? Then? The stipulations and the letter of intent. I'll be honest with you, Mr. Chairman. The, the, the letter of intent expresses what he intends to do. That is really a private agreement uh, between himself and another party. Uh, inside this zoning today, there are a lot of things that would normally be handle, handled solely between private landowners. However, since the applicant has agreed to make the listed stipulations, the six from the HOA plus the two additional that the chairman has identified, those are going to be binding as part of an approved uh, rezoning application should there be a motion second and an affirmative vote to put those in place. And Mr. Chairman, if I were to word that in the form of a motion when it comes time for a motion, I would be happy to restate that motion for someone for a uh, planning commission member to make. Okay. Anyone else have a question? Hearing none, do I hear a motion? Got a guy in the back. Question. I have a question again. Sir, well, I think we're. Yeah, we're 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 past that part. Um, Mr. Chairman, just to yes. restate my previous uh, uh, offer, uh, should there be a motion to approve, uh, it would read some read along these lines. A motion to approve the rezoning application with the 17 listed stipulations. Additionally, with stipulations 1, 2, 3, 5, and 6 from the HOA Board of Directors requested stipulations, plus two additional stipulations, one consisting of a buffer along the Binkley property. Uh, and I I think it's only one additional. I think yes. That, and that would be in form of a motion. And if, and if a member were inclined to make that motion, they could do so by saying so moved. Okay, do I hear a motion? Motion to approve with the... Uh, Information from the county attorney by Mr. Aston. Do I hear a second? Go ahead. All right. Ms. Seaver seconds. All in favor, raise your hand. All right. That'd be 401 approved. take a five minute recess while we're regathering here so uh, stand down for five minutes Next case, please. Okay, thank you very much. Next application is 2020-16-Z, application by Jose H. Rive to rezone 1.462 acres from R2 Suburban Residential District to B2 Highway Business District to operate a landscape of materials and pine straw business in an existing building. Property is located in Landlot 101, District 1, Section 3 
some of the north side of Ridge Road and the east side of Vaughn Road. It's in Commission Post 3. Uh, we have opposition from a uh, neighbor and staff has recommended approval with seven printed stipulations. Applicant is present. Is the applicant here? Step forward, sir, and sign in, please. Uh, my name is Jose Uribe, and I've been in the plant store business uh, since 1992. I used to have my business in, in Gwinnett County. I live in the, in the Polden area since uh, 1998, and I have retired from, I had retired from the plant store business, uh, but now uh, I try to uh, resume here in, in Polden. I talked to a lot of the landscapers, and they, they seem they have a need for somebody to supply plant store. Also, a lot of the residents that uh, live around the area. So, uh, mostly, uh, I guess the application for, was for uh, landscape materials. Uh, mostly would be pine straw and uh, mulch. But I've eventually, probably, I'll have rock too. But uh, that's what my intention is to do just uh, uh, do that. I see the stipulations here. Uh, I my job uh, only requires a space to uh, put uh, pine saw trailers, two or three pine saw trailers, and uh, agree to put a fence in front of the front of the property to uh, buffer the the presence of the trailers. Uh, however, I was told that I need to uh, have a a tree space, parking space for people to co come in. Uh, most of my business is going to be uh, delivered or by telephone, but uh, I can accommodate three par parking spaces. Uh, that's just about all I, I do. I just sell pine straw and distribute it. And I, my wife and I have bought this property to, uh, for that because I guess uh, it's an open space. and. Uh, we can uh, park the trailers there. Uh, when I applied for the, for my business license here, uh, I was told that uh, I also own t 10 acres up in um, uh, Friendship Future Road. And uh, I was doing some business out of there because uh, I was told that uh, by that uh, license board that uh, I could sell plants out there, there and there only if I did not have any signs or uh, I had no traffic going to. So I was delivering, so, uh, but I had a trailer there and one of my neighbors complained, so I had to put, put it out and then I bought this property. And I proceed to, uh, I want to uh, be allowed to uh, do the business there, if possible. Okay, Mr. Uribe, do you understand that um when this prop, when this permit is, you'll have to go through the permitting process, which you'll have to meet with DOT, you'll have to meet with the county fire marshal, and the permit office to, to make sure under, I don't think that house, I'm very familiar with that house, Mr. Corrin donated the land for the fire department next, next right. door there. I'm very familiar with it, and I don't think it's up to standard to have a business in that house, as far as the uh, construction of the house, the wiring and yeah, different they, issues, they they have, they have stripped everything out. There's just just a shelf there. Like I say, I don't. Eventually, I'll try to uh, probably make just an office there, which I I, I really don't need. Like I said, uh, all I need is space to park the trailers, yeah. and to be able to sell the pine straw and, and mulch. 
but in the B2 zoning, there's certain things that you have to meet, certain requirements you'll have to meet. Correct. And to meet with these departments, they will tell you where the driveway needs to be. They'll need to tell you certain things because due to the location of the fire station, you won't be able to use Vaughn Road. And due to the location of the driveway going into the fire station, uh, you won't be able to block it using tractor trailers going in and out of your property. So, Correct. Um, you know, there'll be some issues there that you're going to have, some hoops you're going to have to jump through to, to <coughs> get before you can actually use the property. Right. I understand that. Okay. As long as you understand uh, it. And you, you agree with the seven stipulations? Yes, sir. Uh, what, what, I'm, what, my, what, my plan, well, what I was trying to plan is to uh, fence all the way around the property and you only have one entrance to, to Ridge Road, which I have to expand that uh, the entrance there, so I will not have to use one road at all. Because uh, I got plenty of room to go turn around inside the property that uh, with okay. the trailers. Does anyone else have any questions? Well, how tall is your fence going to be? My what? How tall is your fence going to be? Six foot. Six foot. Th that won't block the side of the trailers, will it? No. Okay. Not another way. Okay. If you need to be taller, I guess I got, I had to make it taller. You know, it's yeah. according to. Okay. I, I was just told that I need an obscure fence in front, and uh, that's what I, I was trying to, uh, to do. Are there other questions? Board of Commissioners. Okay, you can sit down, sir. Is there anyone else that is in <coughs> favor of this application? In favor of this application? Not seeing anyone, is there anyone here against this application? Step forward and sign in, please. Good afternoon. My name is Christopher Hartwell. I'm a five year resident of, almost five year resident of Paulding. I love the community and I came out here for the rural nature of the area, though I understand that we're all under pressing concern to increase tax revenues, which we look for more businesses. I believe in the community so much that I volunteer with CERT uh, under Stephen Dooley and Eve Cogsdale uh, for a number of years now. I don't stand here as a member of CERT. I only say that because of my commitment to the community. The property in question. Uh, has a variety of different reasons why it should be denied with prejudice. And I and several of my neighbors have already talked about that, some of which have been able to come today. Uh, the most recent of these issues, as I understand from the application documentation from Paulding County's website, is just another example of the ongoing willful or based in ignorance lack of consideration of the property owners around them, the county, the roads, and it's somewhat disappointing. The signage for the notification of this was only on Ridge Road. Per the application documents in Paulding County, you cannot have that in the right of way. You cannot have that assigned to other signs. You cannot have that on uh, vegetation. It was all three. I have pictures of that. Additionally, Vaughn Road was not signed. That's why many of the neighbors who we haven't been traveling much with COVID going on. We didn't even see that front sign that you can only barely make out for a moment attached to a tree on the front of the property. When the property was purchased, immediately almost, uh, because I don't know the exact date of purchase, operations began, signage went up, uh, as many as seven tractor trailers were there at any given time. A, uh, a gravel driveway was poured out, uh, as far as I know, with no permits or anything going on. We see deliveries at 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning, and I'm just over the driveway of Sue's property, 
barely maybe 50 feet away from the property in question. And we can't sleep through the night if we have tractor trailer trucks coming in. There's been damage to the county property, the fire station, which that prompted a call to the marshals after myself and multiple others had called the marshals, but we didn't want to involve our names because the new neighbor hadn't even introduced himself to become a part of the community. The mailbox was run over on the fire department property. There's significant tire imprints from large trucks coming in where the firefighters practice for the softball league. The driveway and Vaughn Road have both taken damage. The driveway of Sue's property, which is gravel. Vaughn Road is not paved all the way back. The entryway onto Vaughn Road, which is now proposed that it won't be used, but I don't believe it was a stipulation, is, is, was just repaved about maybe a year and a half ago, and the edges are already cracking. Uh, at least on one occasion, a tow truck had to come in and help unstick one of the tractor trailer trucks, which crossed Vaughn Road and blocked it entirely. The, um, the ongoing business operations were already a violation of the code of this county. And it was disappointing to hear that the representative who'd like this changed has said, well, he only has like one or two or three trucks. When this, we have multiple witnesses, it's excessive, very excessive. On occasions, Sue's driveway has been blocked tractor trailer trucks have overhung onto my property and it's it's an infrastructure issue that isn't supported for a business of this type the turn even on Devon Road which may or may not be used is more than a 90 degree turn if coming from the east and that's why the edges of Vaughn Road are crumbling because they're coming in and having difficulty making a turn We've already had a number of fatalities within 100 yards of that intersection. We're going to significantly complicate traffic situations, which was, I believe, in Section C of the staff comments. Traffic is going to be affected. You have a children's uh, daycare across the street, which is already a significant traffic situation, uh, but it was zoned, it's there, they have plenty of parking. And this is going to cause more issues. I hope not fatalities. I don't mean to be dramatic, but we've had a number of them there. I have talked to the fire department, and as far as I understand, they were going to try and send a representative today when I talked to Eve. Um, I was not able to get a hold of Chief Pelfrey. Um, but it's been an ongoing, willful disregard for the surrounding area that is not a community-minded opinion or action concurrent with the priorities of Paulding County. The noise has, I had a friend, Sean or Trevor, who lived with me for a little while after, my, uh, after he sold his home. His underage son had to get up for school, but repeatedly, He's woken up in the middle of the night by these deliveries, which I don't understand. Um, and this is a question. Please tell me if this is approved, is there any limitations on when they can deliver? Because 50 foot outside of my window, or one of the bedroom windows, they have tractor trailer trucks at five o'clock in the morning. Is there any limitation on that? It can, it can be stipulated. Um, so you live, excuse me. I live you on live 46 right behind Vaughan. this property then? Yes, yours, sir. Yours is next if you'll property see, going down Vaughn Road. Um, yes, sir. Okay. Because the property is there. There's a driveway there that goes to a another property. And then I am 46 Vaughn, which is the two acre property just past that. Um, as I understand the space buffer of 40 foot, that would be helpful, but a six foot fence, as you said, the noise is going to be a significant ongoing issue. Um, if approved, we would ask that, you know, a barrier for sound insulation be constructed of no less than the height of the vehicles being used for delivery. Um, 
We would ask that uh, deliveries as a stipulation do not occur between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. We would ask for a, uh, an ongoing paving and repair be done to Vaughn if it is used. We would ask that uh, entry and exit, you know, would definitely, if at all possible, only happen from Ridge Road. And uh, overall, we would ask that you deny with prejudice because not a single one of the houses on Vaughn Road has a single person that supports this. Their disregard for the surrounding neighborhood is significant and ongoing <coughs> and uh, the application itself, once again, says that no one can be approved unless they have the frontage, as I understand it, the road frontage on each of the roads there and not attached or in the right of way. Um, that's, that's all I have to say. We just, the neighborhood asks, please, deny with prejudice. This is not going to significantly increase the tax revenues or help Paulding County as a whole and the disregard shown for the community is distressing. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any, did, did anybody have any questions for this gentleman? Okay. Is there anyone else that wants to speak against this application? I have the so-called uh, roommate for Mr. Hartwell. Your name again? Sean Long. I've lived with him for almost a year. Um, the My bedroom is actually located right on the, the end of the driveway. And um, I, I, it's countless numbers of nights that I've woken up to the, the semi-tractors you know, coming in and actually delivering um, trailers, they they drop one, they'll pick one up, and it's it's about a 30, 45 minute process for them to get in and out, and it's um, it's very disturbing, especially at three, four, five o'clock in the morning. Um, my son, you know, would regularly wake up, and you know, I'd be up too because it's right on my window as well. Uh, the the noise is is, I mean, it's tremendous, especially at three o'clock in the morning. Um, I would ask that if if it got you know processed through, that the that the fence height, I mean six feet, that's not even covering what what you're going to see of the trailer. As far as the noise is concerned, I mean I don't I don't know how you would um, even go about trying to figure out a, a good way to to stop the noise coming through because it, it I mean it's right there. I mean as soon as you walk out of the house, you see that property and and it, the the noise problem is just significant. So um, I totally agree with Mr. Hartwell, and uh, I do not think this should be something that, that happens right there on that property. Okay. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. I am Susan Strickland. I live, uh... Yeah, Ma'am, sign the sheet there, please. And your name again? Susan Strickland. Susan. Okay, thank you. I, uh, my driveway is the one that goes up from Bond Road all the way back past Chris's house. So I live down in the little hill. Um, everything they said, I agree with 100%. The noise, I mean, I can hear it way back there with the tractor trailers. There's been six, seven up there. I've, they've gotten stuck. There was big old ruts in the yard. Uh, finally, he did bring in some gravel, but like Christopher said, that uh, fatalities, wrecks, I've seen three since I've lived there. I've been there going on 12 years. 
and I've seen three very bad wrecks. One of them was fatality, and uh, that concerns me. The noise, the noise is really bad. I don't, I don't know how a wall or anything would help that. But like I said, I agree with Mr. Hartwell and Trevor 100%. Please uh, consider this area is just not right for <laughs> something like that. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, Mr. Ribbeg, would you come back up? You heard the concerns that they were giving. Um, do you agree with not using Vaughn Road? No trucks at all on Vaughn Road? No trucks at all on Vaughn Road. Okay. And I, I cannot, uh, let me uh, say something. Uh, as far as the noise, uh, you live right next to the road. I don't know how, you, how can you live with all the noise going in the, in, the, in, the, in the road. I mean, a trailer goes there for. 15, 20 minutes to uh, exchange the train drops, and that's it. You know, and uh, I hear that uh, such a big thing about that noise. Uh, I don't know. The only thing I can tell you is that some of the, the I think the lady Sir, here. Sir, you need to address, yes. address me. I, I think the lady here said that uh, her driveway is on, the, on one row all the way to the back. But part of the driveway is, will be on my property. That's why I had it. I had it uh, been uh, to go over there and uh, sign it because it's a set of trees and my property goes all the way to that uh, to the creek and they, they were using the, the inside of the creek to come out, out of there and when I bought the property they stopped, they stopped using it because I had the trailers there so I'm sorry to uh, inconvenience them but uh, I'm not trying to uh, make enemies I'm trying to you know I'm, I'm in the business to, to make a, a profit, not to make enemies. So I, I'll try to, like I said, I have plenty of room to turn around inside the property, and I don't have to use one, one at all. And as far as the trailers, I can have them delivered 8 o'clock, which uh, their concern is uh, hazard. Well, at, at 8 o'clock, everybody, everybody goes to work, and that road is pretty busy. And I thought that uh, by delivering at night or, uh, you know, whatever, I can have it deliver any time I want. So you're okay with limiting the times I got no of delivery I got no, from like 7 in the morning to 10 at night? One trailer will come in. I'll, luckily, if I, if I get lucky, I'll probably sell three trailers a week. So there will be like a three times that they're going to go in on a whole week. Not on a daily basis, not every five minutes, not, not every 10 minutes. It's going to be maybe uh, three trailers in seven days. And uh, I don't have to go into one, one road because I, I plan to circle around the whole, the whole property, all, all the way up to the, to the creek. Okay. Is there any other questions from the board? Yes. Is this an existing business already? residential house. No, I used to I used to have my, my business in Gwinnett. Okay. And I retire. But these these trucks are coming into this area. Well when I first bought the property I I did it for about two weeks and then I got a citation. They, they asked me to by the marshal department and I took all the trailers out of there. Uh, I had just finished uh <laughs> spending some money for uh, gravel so the truck will will not be muddy there. And then I, I, they, I was asked to move out of the trail, so I moved them, moved them out of there. So there's nothing there. It's not, it's not been there for five, five, five months already. Okay. I, all, all I'm trying to do is comply with Paulin County and comp trying to make a living. That's what I'm trying to do. You purchased the property back in September of 2019, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And since then, you had not used the, the uh, property. How long have you been using I it? I used the property for the first two months. And then I got a citation from the marshal department because somebody complained, and uh, I moved everything out of there. That was the first two months that you owned the property in yes, 2019? Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. 
And after that, I've been with, uh, in touch with, with Chris. I came right away to Chris, and uh, uh, he told me what to do. I, he told me, he sent me to uh, Ben, which is that uh, landscape, that uh, surveyor. And he gave me the specifications of what to do. And uh, he wanted me just to uh, fence around the trailer. But I figured that if I got to turn around, I had to fence the whole thing in order not to use bone row. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying, I'm trying to uh, comply with the Portland County laws and everything else. Like I said, at first, when I bought the property, I believe that uh, the lady that sold it to me, the landscaper, the uh, uh, agent, is related to uh, one, of the, one of these persons. And I told her what I was trying to say, it should be no problem, you should be able to to park the trailers, you know, you know, that's all I'm going to do. So that's what I did, and then I, I got cited for having the trailers there. I moved them out of there. I, I, I haven't done anything there for, since uh, since April, uh, March, February, I think. So I'm not there, you know. So you're fine with putting the um, fence up to be a buffer for yes. not only just sight but sound? Yes. As well as limiting the uh, delivery times? Um, as they had mentioned from uh, 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. that there be no delivery during those hours? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And as far as the damage that uh, one night uh, one of the drivers came in, a uh, new driver, which I don't control the drivers. They're, they're their own business, and I just control the financial business. They did uh, knock the, the uh, mailbox of the, on the uh, uh, fire station, and the farm, fireman came over to me, and I and talk to me, I said, I'll, I'll make sure they don't, they don't use it here no more. So, you know, they haven't, they haven't well, I, I had no more use for it because I, I haven't had any more traders there. And like I said, every time they, they go in, it will be like 10, 20 minutes at the most just to drop a trailer and go. Drop it, pick one, and go. When it gets empty, I'll call them in, bring me another trailer, and they bring it in, they drop it, pick the other trailer, and go. It's not like a all night long having a party or something like that, making noise and having music loud or anything like that. It's just business-like. And they do, they do it across the street when they, uh, at uh, Family Dollar, the traders come in and, and unload their business and that's it. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do. Near, you're willing to put a fence up, you say a six-foot privacy fence? Yes, is sir. What your yes, sir. Chain link fence? No. The front would be wood because uh, I was told it had to be obscure. And then the back probably. You're talking about the entire property or just the northern side? Well, the front would be, uh, Rich Road would be a, a wood fence and around the back would be a chain link fence. But if I need to put the uh, wood all the way around, I put wood all the way around. I think. Sir, <coughs> would you be okay with a chain link fence along your property line? Uh, no, sir. We want a sound barrier no less than the height of the tallest vehicle being delivered. And um, honestly, again, it's, it's very frustrating that it's not just denied because they did not follow the signage rules in the application. Uh, I understand from the application that if you do not follow those signage rules, you cannot be approved. So he's not willing to uh, accept a chain link fence um, do, is, do we have any more questions? Mr. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chairman, it seems like it would be more appropriate to uh, use something like Leland Cypress's yeah. for uh, a sound barrier instead of a fence. Um, uh, so I don't know if we consider that or not, but uh, are, you, are you planning to use that existing structure? Because you said it had been stripped out. Are you going to use it or not? Uh, eventually, you know, like I said, I don't know. Uh, right now, uh, I did put a sign there and I put my telephone number. And then they've been calling me for uh, for deliveries, and I've been delivering. Hey, yeah. The application is based on using the existing structure. How does it, how does that, uh, Mr. Robson? How does that affect this? He's not going to use the existing structure. The application <clears throat> was that he was going to use an existing structure out there. Yeah, this is post uh, three, isn't it? Yes. Because our agenda says post four. Yes, it was error. It was post three. That's it. 
Well, just going back and looking at the actual application, the description is that he would have a landscaping material and pine straw business. And his letter of intent is, uh, this is my letter of intent to sell landscaping products at the property at 4218 Ridge Road, Douglasville, Georgia. I don't think the application is not officially saying that he's pinned down to use it in an existing structure out there. Of course, uh, that structure, as well as any new structure, would have to come into compliance with, uh, of course, uh, building code and not only just building a fire code and handicap accessibility. It's, this property is subject to the highway overlay district too, which requires a landscaping component in, and uh, some material changes. Okay, so uh, does it have to go through plan review or not for the uh, infrastructure uh, ingress and egress, uh, Mr. Jones? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, so does this have to come through plan review? Uh, yes, sir. Seems to me like if we're taking tractor trailers in and out, that uh, what's there may not be sufficient uh, for uh, to safely uh, enter and exit. Yes, sir, that's correct. One of the stipulations was access to be determined during plan review. And as part of that, we look at the turning radiuses, um, the existing roadway alignment, how it's going to enter our diesel lane, left turn lane, et cetera. All of that being plan review. Mr. Ashton, also, any improvement to the building or any new building? would have to go through an architectural plan review process also, besides a civil review process. Uh, you stated that you don't really have any control over these drivers. I mean, I think you'd have to have control over the drivers if they work for somebody else they, they entered your property. So, I mean, I think you, if you set a time, the, um, a parameter of I think 10 o'clock seems like that's too late to me. That's, it ought to be 6 or 7 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, I mean, you, you'd have to have control of the people delivering your pine straw, whatever they're delivering to your yes. property. Yes, I would have a, a say so on that. But that's what, what I meant that I didn't have control of drivers when they knocked at uh, the mailbox. You know, the, the farmer asked me to uh, please talk to them and not to use that, so I did talk to them. And I, I don't have to, like I said, I don't have to use bone, bone rod for, for anything. Uh, and as far as the house, uh, I mean, it's been a, kind of a sore spot to do my wife and I. My wife said, knock it down because it's, I mean, it's just a shell. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I, I thought maybe I can just put a shoes rock in there and then make us an office, but I don't, I don't need that. As, as a matter of fact, it would give more space to, uh, Turn around. Because right now, there's a way that they can go in, go around the house, and come back out the same way, or to the right or to the left. And there's probably a quarter of an acre that is uh, filled with trees on the right hand side. That they're, they're, some, they're supposed to be in my property. And uh, will, the right hand side is, is buffered. As far as that lady here, she's buffered between trees. I mean, they're 40 feet high on the right hand side. The one in the back, I don't I don't know, I can put a little inside but like uh Mr. Ellis suggested. I, I got no problem with it. Well it seems to me like you would need to uh, use a combination of a privacy fence with uh, some additional landscaping like Leland Cypresses to act as a sound barrier between you and your neighbor. Would you I mean would you be willing to do that? Sure, I can put the uh, uh, a foot clean in Cypress, but uh, you know, it's still not going to be covered at all trade. Right? You know, it's going to take a couple of years for, for them to grow up. I hope it's still a run at that time. Because <laughs> I'm 78 years old, I'm trying to make a, trying to make a living, that's all. It's not that, uh, you know, I mind my, my own business and I try to comply with everything. Whenever the marshal came to me, I complied right away, moved the trailers out of there. Uh, and I came, well, I, I have come to the business office since uh, 2010 when I first got my license here. And, and I asked, if I could, because I got 10 acres, 
but it's up on top of the hill, and uh, they have a, you know, they have a hard time getting up there with the trailers. And for a while, I was driving the truck, truck tractor trailer. I used to take them up there, had no problem. But now they have to use uh, somebody else to do it. They don't want to go up top of the hill, so then I, we bought this property. And that's, that's the only thing I can tell you, you know. I'm not trying to hinder anybody or be on somebody's a step on anybody's toes. I just want to try, try to make a living. Does anyone else have any questions? Board of Commissioners? Okay, sir. Thank you. Sir, uh, no. we're we're beyond the time. We're, uh, do I hear a motion? I motion to approve with the uh, buffers as mentioned with uh, the combination between the six foot uh, fence and Leland Cypress and with delivery fee from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. What about the use of Bond Road? Do you want to limit the use of Bond Road? Yeah. Okay. So we're talking about the seven stated stipulations. Yes. Number eight would be no use of Bond Road. Number nine would be delivery time limited from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And number 10 would be uh, combination of chain link and landscape Leland Cypress fence along the northern property line. I don't know about chain link, maybe uh, uh, six foot uh, wood, did we discuss wood or chain link? Talking about wood in front. Yeah. He's talking about wood in front, but he was talking about chain link. And we can add the stipulation of the Leland Cypress in the back also as a buffer. And that, that would keep people from coming on the adjoining property also. So that's a total of 10 stipulations. Does anyone have anything else? What if he agrees with those 10 stipulations? Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Mr. Chairman, just, just please keep in mind that on the rear of this property is required 40 foot buffer. Right. That would require uh, evergreen plantings where it's null and void of or of trees at this time and so that's going to be a requirement anyway and it would be a a 40 foot buffer and so the question would be would you have the buffer and then the fence i guess would you want the fence inside the buffer or along the property line that's your motion what how would you want to go? just i would say And there, you, there's going to be a 40 foot buffer, and then you're talking about. Um, I would think the, the buffer as a tree line buffer, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that should be sufficient. If okay. somebody wants to interject on that. Well, see, what he's trying to determine is where you want the fence. You want it on the fence line inside the buffer, or you want it outside the buffer? Um, I would say. Okay, so okay. we're going to have the property line, the 40 foot buffer, and then the fence. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Another thing that I would like to recommend to all people who are buying a home or buying a, a property and don't listen to their realtor <laughs> go to the county. <laughs> Thank you. I'm a realtor. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we've got a motion and a second of the ten, the seven listed stipulations and the three additional stipulations. All in favor? That'd be four, zero, and one. Saying. Hello. Last but not least, hopefully. No, it's been a long meeting, so I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible and sort of give everyone on the Planning Commission and the Board of Commissioners an introduction to a new 
zoning district that we've been working on. Um, it, many of you may recall that two years ago we sort of retired our planned residential zoning district. Um, and what we're presenting today is called master planned residential um, as a as sort of a heir to PRD. And I just want to right now give you some of the highlights on how it's different than PRD. Um, one of the things, PRD had a, a requirement of only 50 acres. We've suggested doing that as 300. We really want to put the P in NPR and we want to put the planning. So we want um, any development that has to do this to really put some thought and planning before they even submit an application to us. Um, just like when we adopted R55, we are designating which um, character areas in the future land use map that this district could go and it would only be in the community residential character which is mostly the eastern part of the county. Um, we are incorporating a different type of use called special exception. This is something on our development ordinance update that we are incorporating into all of our zoning districts. Um, previously in, in some jurisdictions call it conditional uses. It's a use but it has a list of things that you have to meet and we're proposing in our update to call these special exceptions. So that is one thing and just quickly we've listed um, accessory buildings, attached family dwellings and that's one of the things I'll just go ahead and mention. Um, we'd, like, we'd like for these master plan communities to allow a variety of housing types. We don't have a zoning district, correct me if I'm wrong Chris, that allows townhouses. So we'd like to allow 10% of an NPR development to be townhouses. Um, that would be a special exception because you could only do 10%. Um, some of the other special exceptions would be child daycare. Um, another change is to allow up to 15% of a development to have a commercial component, and that would be uses that are permitted in the B1 general business district. Um, Another innovation that we have with master plan residential, we have a conditional use of a common storage facility. Um, as lots have gotten smaller in subdivisions, people sometimes don't give up their toys. They still have a boat or an RV, so we thought it would be um, a good idea to designate an area in a large development for common storage of these type of things that most HOAs don't allow you to park in your driveway and most people don't want you to park in your driveway so there'd be um, that's a special exception use that we've come through and the other items are uh, home offices religious organizations and small cell wireless facilities um, in the PRD zoning district there were some additional and this is I think where we're putting a lot of the planning before you even submit an application in the zoning district um, and I just want to highlight some of the differences from PRD. Um, we're requesting lot layout design specific to the site to be included. Um, we are, and Deborah, you're going to like this, requesting that they be a 75 foot buffer where adjacent to county roads and then a 50 foot undisturbed buffer on the remaining perimeter of the property. Um, we're also sort of, this zoning district sort of because of the large size of it, we foresee it being developed in pods. So there'd be a small group here and a small group here, but it's all part of a large master plan. Um, so we would want some sort of break between those pods. Um, the minimum lot size for this zoning district would be 8,000 square feet. However, 50% of the lots must be 10,000 square feet or greater. Um, and at the present time for a single family attached, um, we're looking at a 6,000 square foot lot minimum. Um, let's see if there was anything else in the special requirements. Um, we want to require amenities. So that's one of the things that they would have to provide for. Um, required amenities would be a walk community center and a walking bicycle and or golf cart trails or sidewalk that connect all public spaces, pods, common spaces, mail kiosk, and development interest. And then we also provide for optional amenities, athletic courts, commercial large grade playgrounds, the common storage facility, golf courses, lakes, and swimming pools. Um, a difference from PRD, PRD was flexible in that you could submit your lot sizes, you could submit your setbacks. We have identified some minimums that can't, you can't go below for all of the uses, the single family detached, the single family attached townhouses, as well as the commercial uses. Um, we have incorporated some architectural standards and one thing that we do want to, once we get the zoning district ready, um, just like today, they had to include the 
site plan, house plan and elevations, that's something we would like to require with the zoning application and be something that can be approved as a stipulation and then adhered to in the, when they start building in that subdivision. Um, our architectural standards also require submission, oh, I said that, 70% um, brick stone on sides fronting other houses or the streets. Um, to be this dense, you would have to have sewer connection and we have a rather detailed definition of what it means to be connected to public sanitary sewer. And that is kind of the highlights. There would be six new definitions that we would want to adopt. Um, those would be amenity, common storage facility, common space, open space, pod, and special exception use. And we would also need to make a change to Article 6 and include this new district to the buffers indicating a 50-foot buffer against any other zoning district. And um, we wouldn't need to put the, se the 75 foot would be on any county road. So that is a 30,000 foot overview of master plan residential. I will be happy to answer any questions or entertain, entertain any comments if anyone would like to see something included in this that we haven't provided. <laughs> Go ahead. Go right ahead. <laughs> On, you mentioned different pods. Is there going to be price differences within the... That would be up to the developer, and that would be something, okay. I mean, we really want, I mean, some of the, there'd be much more required on the front end for this development. That would be the kind of question that we would ask an applicant for this zoning district, what the different pods, what would differentiate them? Would it be a price point? Would it be size? And what that would be. Okay. So there, there, no minimum, basically, or maximum as far as what they could build price-wise. Uh, it's just whatever they could. Uh... Well, we have minimum lot size. It, it couldn't go below 8,000 square feet. Um, we did put in a minimum house size. Um, no, I'm talking about price-wise. They could We did not put anything moon. in here that dictates the price. I don't think we can do that, can I don't we? think we can either. I think, I think once you put the architectural <laughs> the standards, square footage the square footage of the mm -hmm. lot, that kind of all these things would kind of, kind of um, dictate the price of the home. Um, and what was the minimum um, uh, home size? Um, for right now we have a minimum of 1,800 square feet for the detached. And for an attached product... 1800 I think, right? Yeah. I think it was the same. Yeah, it's the same. For both. Now, are we are we going to be asked to vote on that t today? <laughs> it's a lot to take in. Yeah, I'd like to have an opportunity. There's a lot of a lot of stuff here like mm -hmm. the the 1800 square foot um, minimal for single family homes and that being the same as townhouses I'd like to see if we can maybe bump up the square footage for single family homes um, also um, where to me this sounds cool it's kind of like a little city right mm -hmm. almost mm -hmm. you know oh, that's, 300 square uh, 300 acres it's like I would kind of like to visualize where we have 300 acres that are and we have we we've identified some properties so we can if, yeah if we and so i see you look say at this again side. next month we can definitely have that map for you right so it'd be more the east side of the county yes. right not yes um you would have to have sewer to do this and is there is there sewer on the east side only the um around the georgian okay and i don't know that there's 300 acres chris there might be 300 off 92 that has access to sewer but that's probably the only part on the western side I'd love to see something like this, but with a smaller, um, with a smaller mm, acreage, mm -hmm. maybe so it can go other places. Because I love the fact that you're incorporating it. Like I said, it's almost a little city. One of the things that does concern me is um, you're talking about the storage facilities and so forth, which I think is great. But how do you say that the buffer, what's going to be up front, is going to be aesthetic? It's, it has to be. Um, a commercial type of product such as a shopping center which I would love to say on something like this you have your commercial up front you know your public your uh, grocery store your retail up front like Bentwater Seven Hills and then in the back have this but somehow we need to make sure that um, 
That's what I think. If we had time to bulk up the definition and increase for common storage facility, and we could include some buffers in that definition, and that making sure that it's. I think Chris has see, also keep in mind, there's a commercial component of this uh, new district. Mm -hmm. The storage area doesn't mean just you can go out there and open up a business doing a storage area. That storage area is specifically for the residents of that. Right, and, and so it's I want to make sure everybody. It's, right, it's, and it's incorporated within this little, let's call it a little city, right? Right. But want to make sure that it's not something that they're going to put in the front, but it would be something that would be tucked in the back, and like you said, in with the buffers. Um, and only one other thing I could go on and on, but I'm not going to. <laughs> um, one other thing that I would really like to see, maybe some changes. Um, I think I mentioned to Dave Carmichael this. So right now we have a. 15 foot undisturbed buffer, correct? When somebody's going in to, to um, what is the undisturbed buffer when somebody's going in to build uh, residential, like a uh, subdivision? Well, in, in the PRD, in the, the old front. PRD, there was the 15 feet. 15 feet. The, the, uh, this proposes 75 on yeah. any county frontage road and then 50 on okay, any Okay, so the 15 feet increase. of what's happening is um, builders, for example, I've got pictures that I meant to print out and bring. Um, the the um, YMCA property, I'm, you know, uh, I'm sure Jason is familiar with that. You know, the YMCA property, um, they have taken down that 15, they have disturbed that 15 foot undisturbed buffer, taken it completely down. You can see the back of the homes and they have a year and a half to put, to, to replant. Is there a way that we can change where that replanting of that undisturbed buffer go back like when they put the roads in or something at a shorter period of time so it's not an eyesore out there. Hmm. <laughs> Things that make you say, hmm. Let me ask this, Deborah. Why, why could you not do that? If you have suggestions, that's why we wanted to get this out. We spent probably close to 20 hours around the table across the hall. I can imagine. This is huge and I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, yeah. But um, you, you know what uh, subdivision I'm talking yeah, about, Brian, homes, you know. Yeah. Um, it, I don't know how they thing. could, first of all, I don't know how they could sell those homes with it backing up to Cedar Crest Road. But I see that a lot. D.R. Horton's doing that. You know, they're taking down that undisturbed Most buffer. They're first, disturbing so it. And they have a, uh, 18 months to put it back. So how, right. is there a way that we can change that? Well, what is that? Yeah, so the, in this new zoning, I guess my question would be, is that, do they still have a, that length of time once they disturb it to put it back? Well, one thing on the, where the OYMCA that we were talking about where they, they took out the buffer mm -hmm. along the front and everything, they have, they've only had model homes approved. They can't get a final plat approved until they install the buffer back in. So right now they just have a model home permit, or a Six. few out there, and but they won't be able to continue on and get a permit to build a house until that buffer's back in place. It's so just, they've got three or so, four model so homes. So they're going to be held up, and that's a wow. huge financial burden to them to be held up because they need to go plant some trees. So, but I'm not saying that's how we would need to regulate that in the in the new district is just some mm -hmm. things we need to look at it overall with what our developments that's one of the <clears throat> i'm with you We're trying to learn from some of the exactly trying one to of, learn from PRD. You know, one, Do better. One even uh, you can you can think about was even the wind song on Macklin Road. Mm -hmm. They got into all the buffers too, but now they've got their product moving forward and they've done a heavy landscaping back in there. It's been 
Now, are we Here's adding a house. landscaping plan to this? Um, well, the section about buffers reads, except as authorized by the county for commercial or recreational uses, a 75-foot buffer where adjacent to county roads and a 50-foot undisturbed buffer on the area on the remaining perimeter of the property and in between pods shall be indicated. Whether the buffer is undisturbed or landscape will be identified by the applicant subject to approval by the county. So how they're going to address their buffers would be something needed on their site plan that they submit for rezoning. One of the major differences to me between PRD and NPR is the P, the planning. This requires a lot more planning on the front end. And then the fact, now the uh, PRD was how many acres? 50. And I'd like for you to comment a little further because I think the board would be interested, the Planning Commission would be interested, the site-specific piece of it and also the fact that we've solicited comments from selected developers uh, that that have sent back their comments. Yeah, uh, obviously thing. we didn't have time to send something out to everybody. but. Yeah, if, if we had another month to work on this, we, we want to make this site specific. Um, very similar to what we did today with Cedar Crest Village. Um, we want people to submit house plans with their zoning application and those house plans will be given to our building and permitting staff and they will be in majority compliance with that or they will not get a building permit. Um, and we want people to turn in, um, when I research um, old zoning projects, You'll, interesting, you'll see one plan was submitted with the rezoning, and that's not what got built. We, we want, in this case, for what you submit on that site plan, and one of our stipulations would be that it's going to be in substantial compliance with your site plan submitted on August 25th, 2000. And if you, any changes, you'd have to come back to the board. And, and we may have to employ, hire a couple of additional people for Ann's staff but I think the Board of Commissioners, you know, I, I haven't polled everybody, but the, the sentiment I'm getting is they, that we think it's worth it. Uh, we don't want just PRD subdivisions going up everywhere with the uh, minimum size lot with the minimum buffer, if any buffer at all. And, and, uh, such as a 300 acre to address it, to, for a developer to come in and the cost to develop a piece of property such as this, to have the amenities and have the quality that we're looking for in this product, you, I don't know if you can even do it on 58 track. Right. So that's why we chose, and then, you know, and also one of the things to look at, you know, 300 acres, you'd have to have a DRI, which is then just another set of eyes looking at it also. So Good that's point. why Good a point. larger track of the property would be, you know, because somebody with 50 acres is not going to do this. Right. They, they can't afford it. Right. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of why we like the pod concept. If anybody can think of a better word for it, though, <laughs> so that you can, you don't have to build 300 acres at once. You can build 50 acres. And that, that's one of the things we asked for is a time frame of how you're going to develop the entire project. A project that's 300 units or 300 acres could take five years. So we want to know what your scheduling is and, and you could break it up into small groups. And that right. would be where your different size houses and your townhouses might be mixed in to the mix <laughs> by having the pods also you're not having a 300 acres of cookie cutter houses at least you're having some variety that's and what we're hoping able for. to really uh, you know I, I like the idea of what you're now, do presenting they have a time and frame? It, it's obvious y'all did a good job looking at this we would ask him to provide a time frame i don't think we can require you never know you know that you never know what the market's going to do um, nobody would have ever thought a pandemic like this but building has not slowed down it's actually single family i think a lot of people i think paulding county is looking very attractive to people who lived in town and maybe are tired of living near so many people um, and want a little space i know during the pandemic mark and chris got calls almost daily about fences and i think that a lot of basements are getting finished <laughs> And I think since we have someone from the school district here, um, one of the things, because Eric has joined us in our development ordinance update, and even before the pandemic, I'm going to get him to pick some numbers. Um, the community center, the reason why we think 300 acres in a 3,000 scut community center, maybe that becomes a place where students in that community can go for online learning. 
rather than, um, cause I think sometimes, I mean, with an 1800 square foot house, if mom works from home and dad works from home and kids need to stay home from school, well, I think you're probably running out of space. So that's part of the reason for the large amount. So you can have a community center that can be used for a variety of things. I even see a trend of I some- I think you just scared him to death when you said <laughs> 300 acre development. <laughs> but if we build him a little school, in, in, some, in some areas, in some states, what they're doing, like I know in South Florida, they just, there was a group that left at least 10,000 square foot of space just for learning for kids to come in and, you know, a school alternative to the public school. So who knows? What, so um, so that, that's another reason why we, I mean, 300 acres is big, but we do truly want it. I mean, I think Bentwater and um, Seven Hills and the Georgian are some of the nicest communities in Palmer County. How many County. acres are those? Oh, gosh. They're bigger than 300. <laughs> yeah. Much wow. bigger than that. So, I mean, this is just a, a, a minimum. Yeah. Okay. And I'd like to add that we put a lot of confidence in the Planning Commission. You know, obviously, we voted on you and want you uh, on the board. So, we want your responses. I had hoped we would be able to vote on this tonight. Uh, but we could, I mean, we got one developer that just sent in, uh, somebody that's highly respected, uh, just sent in some comments that we got last night. So we're just going to have to slide it until September, and that'll give us time to, to get your all's input. Yeah, I'd like to take one. One thing that would be helpful to us, I think, as a commission, is to have, when you're going to change something, let us get in a workshop. You know, give us some information. You know, we we got this online, but maybe a workshop and talk about it. A week ago. Yeah. A week ago. That's a great idea. I, Are we allowed we to could, do that to congregate yeah. together it, as a two at a time? <laughs> no, two at a time. Oops. You're allowed to be less than a quorum, but you can always have a workshop as long as public is invited to yeah. attend. So I guess with the planning commission we can have three because there's seven. So, Mr. Chairman, don't forget to solicit any public comments. <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions for the staff, commissioners? <laughs> Is there anyone in the public that wants to have a comment? <laughs> Seeing none. <laughs> Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Or do you, do you want it voted on tonight? I have a motion to table Okay, there's a motion to table to September meeting. Do I hear a second? Motion by Ms. Seaver, second by Mr. Aston to table to the September meeting. All in favor? All in favor, raise your hand, please. All right, that is be four zero and one and please mark your calendars that will be september thursday september 17th at two o'clock yes the next week is school break <laughs> a break for eric maybe but uh september 17th on a thursday it's, it's quick it's getting quick thank you Okay. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? All right. All in favor? Four zero one.